Hey guys, this is Projection Music Live with another tutorial and this is part of a series where we are going to have a look at Ableton from the perspective of a very beginner. So once you've installed Ableton and you launched it on your computer, it will more or less look like this. This is the basic interface Ableton will show you. Let's quickly go one step back and assume you, you don't know too much about producing music right now, you're just starting out and you're asking yourself, what do I actually need? I've seen so many pictures of studios and I'm asking myself, what do I actually need to make music? Like this, for example, is a picture of one of our desks and it shows pretty nicely what you could use for making music and what is optional and what is necessary. So absolutely necessary is a computer, of course, and some kind of software, digital audio workstation software like Ableton, so you can actually produce some music. You also need a sound card. Every computer has a sound card included, for example, to play your sound from YouTube videos or something. But also many people who are producing music are using external sound cards, like this one I'm using over here called Scarlett. It's from Focusrite. And there are many different companies making those types of sound cards. Sometimes they also call them interfaces. So sound card interface, pretty much the same thing over here, an external device with inputs and outputs and volume controls where you can process your audio and MIDI information as well. Next to this sound card, we have a hardware controller over here. So this is an optional thing. You don't really need that to make music, but it's nice to have. So this is the Ableton push controller, which basically allows you to hit those knobs over here and input signal. Could be a MIDI signal, for example. In this case, this is connected via USB to this hub over here and you can control MIDI with this controller. This is a MIDI controller as well, so this little keyboard over here allows you to input this MIDI information and then use them inside of the program. This is another MIDI controller over here, so those are optional. You don't need them because you can also draw this MIDI information into your Ableton, but it's more straightforward maybe with a MIDI controller. What you see over here is uh, two studio monitors there are many different manufacturers for monitors. You could also use headphones in the beginning, for example, if you don't want to spend too much money. So basically you could work with a computer and with Ableton, with headphones, and it's possible. And everything else is optional, like an external sound card, MIDI controllers, and good speakers, like monitor speakers or something. So let's go back into Ableton. This is what Ableton looks like when you start up for the first time and you notice you have a couple of MIDI channels loaded over here and a couple of audio channels loaded. So there's a difference between MIDI and audio. We will talk about that in a minute. There are two views basically. If you toggle between those two views over here, you see this is an arrangement view for more precise editing. And this one is uh, the session view for getting song ideas into your project and looping in live mode. So if you want to be sure you have your audio working, you should go to the preferences. This is the preferences window. It looks the same on Mac and Windows. And you have options look and feel. You have language, how you want to zoom your display and stuff like that. Audio. This one is basically important because you need first make sure you have audio going on. So you have audio device over here, driver type. We have core audio right now because we are on a Mac. On Windows it would have something like DirectX over here or maybe also ASIO depending on what you're using. So this is really dependent on your specific setup. If you're using an external sound card for example you could select those drivers over here as well. For example, on my Mac, you can also uh, select the external sound card in here and the output devices like this one, Scarlett over here is my external sound card at the moment. And I'm using Soundflower right now because I'm recording this video. And then you also have your system output, which is called Ausgang over here because that's German. Going on, this is the sample rate. When we're working with audio, 
44,000 is fine, high quality up. Buffer size is interesting if you have heavier projects and you're trying to do something live or play MIDI instruments live into your Ableton project, then you need to worry about buffer sizes. If you're not doing too much, you can actually take that down to very low values, but I'm leaving it at 512 right now. So this is a completely a different story depending on what you're doing and what your setup is. This is a test mode down here where you can actually test if you hear anything and what happens if you simulate higher CPU usage with those selected buffer sizes. Will it still be able to play everything without crackling? Looking good over here so we can keep everything the way we have it right now. Okay, so we have audio. And we have more options over here like MIDI sync and file folder, library, record, warp, launch, CPU, multi-core support and licenses. So we will go through those a little later, but now that we have audio, we can demonstrate some stuff quickly. So this is the view of Ableton. And you see, if you open up this info view down here, toggling this arrow down here, it will always show you information regarding the area where you're hovering your mouse over. So this is telling you right here, this is the track title bar. This is the play button, stop button, record button, and so on. So this info view is really helpful. And in the beginning, you should have it open at all times to be sure you know what you're doing. So let's quickly do one thing and wrap up this first session. Over here we have our browser, which is basically where you find all your sounds and MIDI files and all your instruments and plugins. And you can add your own folders down here. So probably you don't see all those folders because they're my individual setup over here. But we can quickly load some samples just to show you how audio is working. So we have a couple of audio tracks over here, which is basically like playing MP3s or WAV files or AIF files. Or audio is anything, you know, from YouTube and MP3s. And MIDI is basically data. So this is sending data first, for example, from your MIDI controllers. So let's quickly load in some audio. I have some audio clips prepared over here. Let me quickly load in a basic drum loop, which is an AIF file, which could be also a WAVES file. It's an audio file format. I'm going to select it from this browser over here and drag it onto an audio channel. And you see it's creating a clip. This is what they call clips over here. If we double click into any clip, it will show down here in this area called uh, the clip view. You can also see it warped this sample automatically and figured out it has 90 beats per minute. Since it's the first file we are putting into our project, it adjusted the overall project speed to 90 beats per minute. Over here you can adjust your beats per minute values. If we play this back at 90 beats per minute right now, Sounds like this if we go up in the speed. So this would be doubling the speed. If you want to stop your playback, you can just hit the space bar or you can click this button over here and play back again. So let's take it back to 90 and leave it at 90 beats per minute. So now we are sure we have audio playing. This is pretty nice. We have our first sample loaded into the project and we can also be sure our MIDI is working. So this is a MIDI track over here. This is basically information. If we arm this MIDI track down here, we can hit any key on our external MIDI controller, for example, and 
it should show some kind of movement over here. So if I'm hitting my Ableton push controller, which is basically this thing over here standing next to me, I'm going to hit those buttons now. You see it shows it, it shows some movement over here. But right now we are not doing anything with this information. But we could put on a MIDI instrument and play back some sound. So since we are using Ableton Suite here, we can go to Instruments and select one of the instruments that come with Ableton Suite Edition, for example, Analog. If I use Analog and drag it down here, hover over the MIDI channel and then drag it down here, it opens up and this is the complete instrument that can take MIDI signal and convert it into audio. So you see MIDI goes in, audio comes out. This is basically what happens on a MIDI track.